Most of us are familiar with the clone effect. At its core, it's a visual effects shot comprised of two or more takes where the same person acts out the scene in multiple ways. And those shots are then stitched together with masks and by layering them on top of each other to make up one single shot. We have also done it in the past, such as with this video called Best Clone App Ever. We've seen countless of them in films, ranging from basic shots locked off on a tripod, to more complex motion control shots, to even full-blown computer-generated imagery. It's often one of the first visual effects people figure out how to do as they dive into the VFX world. Kind of like a test to see if you're worthy of being a visual effects artist. As for this video, we're gonna be using the Power Dolly from Kane TV, which is a motorized dolly system that allows us to get the same shot over and over again. They did send us this device to try out for free and we released a review for it recently. So if you're interested in a more detailed breakdown on how it works, then do check it out. And if you end up wanting to purchase it, then make sure to use the affiliate link in the description to get a percentage off at checkout and also help us out with a commission. This is the first shot we see in that review video, which is what we're gonna be breaking down today. So to get started, I first had to figure out the shot composition and where I wanted myself to be for each clone. I kind of had this shot in mind where I wanted the camera to push towards an open door into a room. So at first we only see one guy and as it goes through, we then reveal the other two guys which turn out to be the same guy. So there is a small element of storytelling involved which is an important question to ask yourself whenever you're working on your own projects. Does this add anything to your story or is it just a cool shot? The first problem I ran into was that the dolly tracks couldn't fit through in order to get the angle I wanted as the door wasn't wide enough. But it did work out in the end since I just had to figure out which way to put the dolly on the tracks so I could mount the camera on the leg that has the furthest reach to the door. To mount the camera on the dolly, I used a clamp with a ball head in order to get a low angle shot and have maximum control as to where and how I wanted to place it. Then I put a monitor on the camera so I could see myself as I was figuring out where I wanted each clone to be and avoid any intersections so I wouldn't have to do any rotoscoping and then proceeded to do some test shots. Here are a few things to keep in mind if you're looking to try this effect out. If you set the aperture to let's say 2.8, then you will have a more shallow depth of field. So if you set the focus point to be on the foreground subject, the background subject will be out of focus. And of course it depends on what you're going for, but for this shot specifically, I decided to use F8, which does come at a cost of exposure since you're letting less light in, and will have to compensate with either more light or by boosting the ISO, and that can lead to a degraded image and more noise. But F8 gave me deep enough focus to cover each clone. Additionally, I was bouncing an aperture 120D on the ceiling for a stronger soft ambient light. Try to shoot in an environment with controlled lighting because if the lighting changes throughout shooting the individual clones, which could take minutes, then you'll be able to notice the difference in exposure from one shot to another when you try to rotoscope them. I shot this at night so the lighting was the same throughout. Do not move the camera or change the camera settings, especially not the focus. You want to have the same angle for each clone and same settings. So again, you don't have any issues in post with stitching them together. Do not move any objects that overlap with the space of the other clone. For example, I made sure not to touch the curtains because I saw from the monitor that the curtains overlap between the left and middle clones. So if they move in one shot and not on the other, then the effect will break. Also, avoid any intersection between the clones so you don't have to do extra rotoscoping. In that case, each clone would stay on one part of the whole shot. But of course, having movement or better yet interaction between the clones makes for a far more interesting VFX shot, but my point is that you're gonna have to work harder for that. After taking all those things into consideration, I made sure to clean up any clutter, set the dolly movement speed, and then acted out each clone while the dolly was going back and forth until I had everything I needed. 
And actually, the post-production process is the most straightforward part, as I just brought the clips in After Effects, lined up the timing for each shot, did some rotoscoping along natural seams to better hide the masks, feathered them slightly, animated them over time to make sure there wasn't any overlap, and also slightly adjusted the position for one or two of the shots that drifted slightly over time, as that can happen especially if the surface the dolly is moving on isn't perfectly flat or if the camera is mounted on something that can't properly support it. And there we have the final result, which wasn't really that complicated to pull off, but I'm aware that you do need access to a motion control system for the added benefit of perfectly repeating the same camera movement. We tried using the power dolly for other shots as well, and this is what we ended up with. So it's a really fun way to add an extra layer of complexity to an otherwise simple effect. All right, guys, so that was all for today's video. So thanks for watching and being patient all the way through. I hope you learned something new. And again, check out the full review of the power dolly to get a better idea of what this device is capable of. Take care and we'll see you next time.